Hey, Tommy from the Runcesters. In this video, we are going to be reviewing the Adidas Supernova Rise. Now, these shoes were sent to us by the guys over at Sport Shoes. We're not paid to review the shoe, so we can say whatever we want. But a big thank you to the guys over at Sport Shoes for sending these over so we can do some videos. There's also a link to Sport Shoes in the caption below. This is an affiliate link, so we do make some money if you end up buying the shoes. Uh, so just be aware of that if you click on the link. Right, let's dive in and do the full review. Yeah. The Adidas Supernova Rise costs £130 or $140. It weighs 284 grams or 10 ounces for men in a size 8 and the drop is 10 millimeters. The Adidas Supernova Rise is a training shoe designed for comfort and cushioning over daily miles. The Dream Strike Plus midsole is built for softness and includes a support rod system to reinforce the foam. The sandwich mesh upper aims to offer a good level of breathability while providing a lockdown fit, while a generous AdiWare outsole covers the length of the shoe to improve grip and durability. So I had no concerns at all with the fit of the Adidas Supernova Rise. I've got my normal UK 9 here, which for Adidas uh, equates to a US 9.5. So it comes up a little bit smaller than some brands where it goes to a US 10 from a UK 9, but I had enough room in the toe box, no problems there. Good hold around the heel and midfoot. There's a lot of padding at the back of the shoe, but it didn't irritate my Achilles or anything like that. It just held the foot nice and securely, nice and comfortable. Uh, certainly more comfortable than the uppers on the Adidas Zero range from Adidas, I'd say. So yeah, perfectly happy in my normal running shoe size. Now for the Supernova Rise, I ran in my regular running shoe size, which is a UK eight and a half, and I I found that these fit well true to size. I find Adidas shoes sometimes come up a bit narrow in the midfoot and that's still true here to a certain extent but not in a troubling way it just feels like you've got good lockdown kind of bordering on the snug. Midfoot lockdown was generally good therefore and the rise held my foot nicely in place with no heel slipping and just about enough room in the toe box overall here yeah good fit I'd recommend going true to size. So the fit for me in the Adidas Supernova Rise I I'm at a size eight in the UK. This is a size eight. I found it to be fine. But what I would say is that there wasn't loads of room in the forefoot between my big toe and the end of the shoe. So if you normally go half size up in Adidas shoes, you might want to do it in this shoe. I would stick to my size in this shoe, but if that's an issue for you, then you may need to be aware of that. Other than that, I did find it to be a pretty comfortable shoe. It's very plush in the upper. The uh, upper design is um, nice and locked down. I've raced in this shoe and I found it to be a really nice lockdown fit. I didn't have any issues with that. Uh, and there's loads of padding around the ankle collar as well. It's quite a comfortable shoe uh, and I didn't have any issues at all. <laughs> Now the run test then, well after some first run miles where I got quite excited about this shoe straight out of the box, I've now run just short of 50 kilometers in the Supernova Rise. That's at a mix of paces, mostly on road with some light off-road like I usually do. And I found them to be a bit more of a mixed bag than I did in that first run where I thought, wow, this is a pretty good shoe. There's pretty good step in comfort here, quite plush padded collars and tongues that make it feel nice around the foot. It's not quite as instantly disappearing in natural fitting as something like the Socony Ride 17, which I found were great straight out of the box. You do notice the shoe a bit more. I'm not 100% sold on the thicker engineered sandwich mesh uppers that you've got here. It just doesn't feel the most natural shoe that I've ever worn, but it's certainly not the worst. And it's an okay for me overall on that kind of foot feel. When it comes to the ride underfoot, I've got these in towards the firmer, more responsive end of things, though not too firm. I feel like they're a livelier kind of Adi Zero SL. I get smooth transitions, good roll from the rock ring. The 10 mil drop, I felt almost sort of tips me forward a little bit into toe offs. The landings are just about cushioned enough to take the edge off the road, but the Peba based Dream Strike Plus foam here and that support rod system stiffens very quickly, I think, to give quite a lot of immediacy that some fans of soft shoes might find a little firm overall. There's not much sink here, you know, to take the edge off that row, but what I did get is some spring, basically you're getting a compliant responsive foam to run off without the squish that you might find in bigger stack, softer daily shoes like the Nova Blast. Now they performed okay at both ends of my pacing from easier miles up to marathon pace, but I found them definitely better at the faster paces where you're picking your feet faster working at a higher turnover and you're a bit more kind of up on those forefoot. In fact I actually found that they sort of encouraged me to tick along faster. There's a good energy here overall when you do that and I put these at the firmer faster end of daily trainers. And I think some people might even enjoy doing some shorter races in them maybe up to even a half marathon distance. On one of my more kind of tired and longer runs at a slower pace 
where I was feeling a bit more beleaguered. I found myself wanting a little bit more protection and that's made me put the rise in the pile of shoes that I think I can use to run long, but are probably best for longer miles when I'm running well rather than feeling tired and, and, and landing heavy. They're certainly not as forgiving as something like a New Balance 1080 or a Brooks Ghost Max or even like a Triumph 21. So yeah, that's the thing. That's where they sit for me. So I've run over 50K now in the Adidas Supernova Rise, doing a mix of daily training runs. I've done one longer run and then a couple of easier steady runs to see how it feels at faster paces, plus some general short, easy runs as well. Overall, I'd say I just haven't really clipped with the shoe. Uh, it's a pretty solid daily trainer all round. It's really well balanced, quite a neutral platform. I didn't find it that comfortable, but it wasn't uncomfortable. And it can move a bit faster. It was okay for me on a long run as well, but there's lots of shoes with rides that I enjoy a little bit more, I'd say. But one thing in particular I noticed, it feels a bit thin under the forefoot and not necessarily in an enjoyable grounded way, just in a slightly flat way. And like, it feels like it's not that comfortable under the forefoot as a result. You don't really get a lot of bounce back from the foam under the forefoot. So it just feels, like I say, a little bit flat and dead there if you're pushing to faster paces you're not getting a big amount of bounce or a nice really fast toe off from the shoe it's and then when you go to easier paces it, like i say it feels a bit thin and less protective than other daily trainers so i don't love that aspect of the shoe and i feel like that would limit it for me in terms of i wouldn't really enjoy doing faster long runs in the shoe like it's okay for short intervals it's quite a light and nimble shoe and actually runs a bit lighter even than its weight which isn't that high but it doesn't really feel like it's giving a load back i wouldn't really enjoy holding fast paces in the shoe over extended periods didn't find it particularly bouncy shoe or a soft and squishy you. This Dream Strike foam is pretty good, uh, but it's no Light Strike Pro, that's for sure. But it, yeah, it's just kind of a neutral foam. Like all round, the shoe just feels like a pretty solid traditional daily trainer. Like it's a good thing. Like it's a nice workhorse shoe potentially, but it doesn't really feel like it's embraced some of the aspects of modern daily trainers that I think stand out a little bit more. And as a result, the ride is just that little bit flat for me. Like especially under the forefoot, like I say, you're just not getting a load back from it. And while it's fine, you can do pretty much anything in this shoe. And when it comes to your daily training, I think you're going to find more enjoyable rides elsewhere. You're going to find shoes that have a bit more punch for fast runs, and you're certainly going to find more comfortable shoes for easy runs. So kind of ends up being that classic jack of all trades master of none but i think there are better jacks of all trades there are better jacks is what i'm saying so there's a lot going on with the adidas supernova rise essentially it's designed as a daily shoe it's the brand talk about it being designed for lots of comfort um but really it's a shoe that sort of fits in that realm of the those shoes that you're going to go out and do sort of general running in day to day so what i've found out from this shoe so far is that it's a comfortable shoe. Um, it ticks the boxes for if you're just going out and, and trying to do the miles um, with a nice soft midsole. But really, I can't really work out what its main purpose is other than those sort of easy daily runs, basically. The midsole in it, it's got this Dream Strike Plus midsole. Uh, and it is really soft. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of midsole foam in here, but when you're running in it, it really compresses quite a lot. So it doesn't feel like there's a, a really big midsole foam in. It actually feels like it compresses and you lose any benefit of that midsole foam. It's still very comfortable. It just doesn't have anything in the way of bounce or return or anything like that. Uh, and it sort of doesn't need to have that much midsole foam in it for me. It's just a very soft, uh, spongy midsole that doesn't really give anything back. So there's a lot going on with this midsole and outsole. Uh, as well as that Dream Strike Plus midsole foam, you also have these support rods that sit within the midsole foam. Now, if this was a carbon plate shoe, those would be carbon um, rods. In, in this, they're actually more like supportive rubber, which I don't really see the point of. It doesn't seem to add any structure to it. Uh, because of that soft feeling of the ride, I don't know what the rods are doing really. They don't, they don't seem to offer any benefit and there's many shoes that I run in that are daily shoes that have no technology like that in and they feel a little bit more responsive. They feel a little bit more structured than this shoe. Um, it's also got three different types of rubber on the outsole. So you've got this rubber on the front, rubber on the back and then this sort of weird one that sits in the middle uh, and then a little bit of um, the midsole foam and these support rods showing there so it's a bit of a complicated shoe really that doesn't really need to be that complicated it's up against a lot of shoes that are quite simple in how they're designed things like uh, the cloud surface 7 i would probably put in a similar realm with this that's a really soft shoe but it's it's no way near as complicated as this shoe so when i've been out running what i've found is that when i raced in it i actually ended up doing a trail race in this which wasn't 
really a trail race but there was a lot of mud on it because it was really wet on the day um, and to be honest it was po completely pointless for that and I'm not going to review it based on that because uh, it was mainly over mud uh, but on the road training that I've done um, I found it to be a, a shoe that's fine I within between about 5 and 10k it's absolutely fine it's comfortable it does the job as long as you're not trying to go fast or anything like that but when you try and pick up the pace in it, that really spongy midsole foam really doesn't deliver a lot back. It doesn't give you a lot of bounce. There's not really any um, responsiveness in it. It's just a soft midsole foam that doesn't really serve a great deal of purposes. So I think what I found about this shoe is that it's one of those shoes that really fits into the world of general runners, maybe first time runners that want to pick up a shoe and go out and start training. Maybe you're doing couch to 5K. Maybe you are you want a shoe that you can just wear for quite nice, simple runs that you're going out on. It doesn't really have any performance benefits from what I've seen. Um, definitely wouldn't use it for uh, a longer distance. I probably wouldn't go over 10, 15K in this shoe. Definitely wouldn't use it as a recovery shoe because it just doesn't seem to have the structure and the cushioning that I want from my recovery shoes. So really, it just sort of delivers as an okay generalist shoe, um, which is quite comfortable, but doesn't really deliver anything in the way of performance benefits. Uh, I have um, the outsole isn't particularly great for uh, slipping. So on the road sections uh, that I've tested on in the rain, it's okay. It's not. It's it's not bad. But it's a it's it's a little bit smooth this outsole, so it's not great on wet conditions. This midsole section here is also quite smooth, so if you land on the mid uh, section of the shoe, then you might find that it's a little bit slippy on those sections as well. So not a great outsole um, for hitting wet conditions on the road. Other than that, I don't really have any major plus points to say about it. Um, I think the cost of it actually makes it a little bit more tempting because when you compare it with a lot of other shoes out at the moment, it's a little bit lower. But in reality, I don't really see what this shoe is designed put for apart from general running and comfort. So my verdict on the Adidas Supernova Rise is that it is fine if all you're doing is some general runs between 5 and 10k. Uh, if you want it for anything else, if you wanted something for recovery runs, it's just not cushioned enough. That cushioning just doesn't really do a lot for me. It's a little bit energy sappy and doesn't really do a lot. If you're trying to run faster in it, the same thing. That midsole just really doesn't give you anything back. It's not responsive. It doesn't really give you any energy return from um, this new Dream Strike Plus midsole. It's a very comfortable shoe. If you're looking for the Adidas style, maybe something that's a little bit cheaper than some of the other Adidas shoes out there, it may, might be a good option. Um, but it's very, it's just really a very simple, soft shoe, which you can use for general runs. Other than that, I just don't see any major benefits to the shoe uh, over and above a lot of other shoes out there. If you're looking for a really versatile daily trainer, there are some really good options, things like the Socket Endorphin Speed 3. Of course, that does have a plate in it, but it's just a lot more responsive and can actually do both sides of the scale better than this shoe. It's fine for um, easy efforts, it's great for long runs, and also it's really good at doing fast runs as well. This doesn't really do any of those things particularly well. There's other shoes out there as well, which are a lot cheaper. Puma Velocity Nitro 2 is significantly cheaper than this shoe. Um, it's a little bit more in terms of cushioning in it. You just get a bit more responsiveness from it. Um, and it's just a bit more of a solid feeling shoe. So I just, it's a difficult one to, to put in. Um, if you're, I, th I think the market is gonna be sort of generous runners that want an Adidas shoe basically, but when you put it up against a lot of other daily shoes, I just don't think it really competes very well. So the verdict is that the Adidas Supernova Rise is a pretty solid shoe all round. It kind of makes sense within Adidas's lineup to have a cushion daily trainer that's a fair bit lighter than things like the Ultra Boost or even the Ultra Boost Lite. However, for that to be the case, you've kind of got to not see the Boston as that shoe. And I know that Adidas doesn't really pitch the Boston as a daily trainer because it's in the Adi Zero racing fast shoe range, but I think the Adidas Boston 12 is a fantastic all-round daily trainer and pretty much does 
everything better than the Supernova Rise for me. Like I find it more comfortable, especially over longer runs with the combination of foams in the midsole and the slightly lower drop. Certainly got a lot more bounce and punch if you can do faster runs thanks to the Light Strike Pro and the energy rods in the midsole. Definitely good for holding paces over long reps, but also lighter. It's also lighter and nimbler for short reps. It's even got better grip from the Continental Rubber Outsole. I think the only thing that's less impressive about the Boston when it comes for general daily training is the upper, which is a bit too kind of flimsy and racy on the Boston, which is fine for fast runs, but you want a bit more padding maybe for uh, general daily training runs. So if AS is going to make a shoe like this, my preference would have been they just made the Boston 12 with a padded upper like this, and that would have been a really fantastic, more comfortable daily trainer. Supernova Rise is kind of fine, but I just think all those aspects to Boston is a little better. Now I know some people would see the Boston as too lightweight and speed focused to use in the same way they might use the Supernova Rise, but I really do think the shoes kind of play similar roles. I don't really find this a lot more comfortable, certainly. I actually find the Boston more comfortable, like I said. Then outside ADAS, it's a pretty solid competitor to things like the Nike Pegasus 40. I actually think it's uh, pretty close between those two shoes. The Supernova Rise feels nimbler and lighter and better for fast stuff, although the difference in weight really isn't there. And then the Pegasus, I think, is a bit more comfortable and solid for long miles, easy miles. So picking between those two would be tricky. I'd probably lean just about to the Supernova Rise myself, but both are good solid shoes. I'd say the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 knocks both of them into a cocked hat. You know, I would say that. I love the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 3 coming soon, but I just find that a livelier, more comfortable, more versatile, better all-round uh, cushion daily trainer, and it has a better outside as well for those runs if you're going on light trails or slippy pavements. Sockney Ride 17 just came out, and it feels a lot bigger and more cushioned on the foot than the Adidas, and it is a fair bit heavier, but it is probably a more comfortable shoe for long runs, but I do think the Supernova Rise is a better, more versatile shoe for your daily training. I think it can handle a bit more about it if you just want a cushioned cruiser, the Ride 17 would be the better pick. And I've also just started testing the Asics Nova Blast 4, which I have liked so far in a couple of runs. And again, I think that exemplifies what maybe the Supernova Rise is trying to do, but in a better way. It's a bit more of a modern all-rounder daily trainer. It's got the big midsole, it's a higher stack, it's more comfortable, it's got a slightly lower drop, it feels like a more cushioned shoe, and then gives a little bit more back if you are going to try and run a bit quicker in it. I don't think Nova Blast is an exceptionally versatile shoe, but I think it does a similar job to the Supernova Rise, and I find it a more enjoyable shoe to run in than the Supernova Rise. So all around really solid daily trainer this. I just think it lacks a little something uh, in terms of the ride feel that you can get from other shoes. Verdict then, well, based on my tests, I think this shoe will cater to a wide range of runners for a lot of different runs. It's a welcome antidote to the really big, big stack dailies that we've seen become more prevalent recently. And I was impressed by how responsive it was and how well it ran, actually. If you're a fan of big hulking great monsters like the Invincible or the Nimbus 25 or even the Nova Blast, this might be a little too stiff for you, perhaps a little too much coming up from the road underneath to suit your needs if you prefer those kind of shoes, particularly on those longer miles, say over 90 minutes on feet. But I really enjoyed all but my most tired test miles in the shoes. I felt like I was getting plenty of benefit from the foam, the rods and that rocker combo. It encouraged me to move faster and I found that I was running at quicker clips with lower heart rates, so looking at kind of overall less effort when I had this shoe on. Overall, I think the Supernova Rise strikes a happy balance. The cushion is not too soft and heavy, but it's also not too thin and firm. And though this isn't the lightest daily trainer on the shelves, it felt quite light and nicely precise, but with a good, stable, reliable platform to run off. There's good versatility here, and I think for £130 at the lower end of that daily trainer sort of price bracket, I think there's pretty good value here as well. I also like that Adidas is offering a no questions 30 day trial. So you can get these shoes in. If you don't like them after 30 days, no matter how many miles you've put into them, you can send them back and Adidas will refund you, which is awesome. What a great way to be able to sort of test out a shoe. I don't know if other brands do that. I've not seen it. it's the first time. So correct me if there are other brands are offering this, but that's quite nice. Now, I'm not sure these would be my first choice right now. I think the Socony Ride 17 offers more, but I think it's a pretty accomplished trainer. And yeah, I think there's going to be a lot here for a lot of runners. That's it from us on this review of the Adidas Supernova Rise. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click that little bell. And also, if you go into the caption below, you can find a link to this shoe on the Sports Shoes website to find out more. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.